Thank you for staying with us. Now, the Nigerian government has invalidated over 22,700 degree certificates from fake universities in Togo and Bene Republic. Now, these certificates were obtained from unrecognized institutions and many were acquired through racketeering. Now, the government has approved the dismissal of workers with fake certificates and mandated officials to identify those in government employment with such certificates. This move aims to prevent individuals with fake certificates from competing with legitimate graduates. Now joining us as guests on, to, on this particular topic, uh, we have Dr. Peter Ogudoro, education researcher in Lagos, Nigeria. And we also have Dr. Wana Samuel, lecturer, University of Lagos in Lagos, Nigeria. Good evening, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us on the conversation. Thank you for having me. All right, so let me begin with Dr. Ogodoro. Now, doctor, uh, what are the ripple effects of the government's decision to invalidate degree certificates obtained from universities in Togo and Bene Republic? Well, the uh, signal this is sending, um, especially to Nigerian students who are studying in those institutions, is that um, they are in the wrong place. So all the investment they have made staying in those kinds of places, especially those who have approached their final year, would amount to wasted, wasted investment. And uh, I tell you, uh, this is uh, not very good for the Nigerian you know, young person, uh, but we can't uh, completely blame the government for what, for what has happened, even though they have to take a significant part of the blame. Because the reason why we also find young people seeking opportunities outside of our shores for higher education is obviously because we haven't created enough opportunities for them to achieve their dreams, you know, through uh, um, institutions uh, within our country. You must be aware that uh, out of every uh, 10 young people who want to get into universities in Nigeria, not more than about five of them do actually get access. So limited access to higher education has uh, been a major factor driving young people out of our country. Unfortunately, because of lack of proper career guidance, they are not able to determine uh, whether the institutions they go to abroad are the right ones or not. And that's how come we are where we are. It's very unfortunate, uh, but uh, it looks like um, the government has taken this as a necessary decision. All right, let me pass the same question to uh, uh, Dr. Samuel. Now, uh, can you go ahead and share your thoughts with us on you know, uh, the ripple effects of a government's decision to uh, to clamp down on these fake universities and how it might affect, you know, students from such universities with such certificates. Thank you very much for having me once again. Um, when you want to know in the academia, when you want to know, um, when you want to know uh, the cause of any problem, um, you kind of um, uh, problematize it and uh, then look at um, uh, the cause of it. Why would Nigerians leave? Uh, the shores of Nigeria with, with a lot of universities, reputable universities all over the country from the north to the south to the west to the east to Cotonou and then to Benin Republic to go and get themselves a degree. It just shows you that, um, you know, this set of people, this set of students, you know, they don't want to study to learn. What they want to do, or this, I won't even call them students, this category of people, uh, they don't want to learn something. They just want to um, get a certificate in quotes, you know, that can allow them, you know, to come back to Nigeria and then function because in the, because the Nigerian system is um, uh, placing so much emphasis on degree, degree before you get a job and all of that. And then when you get outside of the shores of Nigeria, maybe to Senna climbs, you know, what obtains in most Western capitals, you find out that um, even those without a degree or even those without a certificate or educational certificate per se, uh, even those without it can earn a decent, can eke out a decent living. And some of them can earn, you know, um, even uh, um, um, better than those that are working in the office. So you ask yourself, what is driving Nigerians uh, towards this country to go and get fake certificate? Very simple, because uh, the Nigerian government is laying so much emphasis on you know, acquiring a degree, acquiring a form of certificate before 
uh, they can offer you unemployment. Now, I'm asking why... Okay, just before you, you move um, ahead, uh, uh, just before, be before you move ahead, uh, Dr. Ogudoro uh, actually said that, you know, Nigeria has not created opportunities for these students to actually pursue the dreams that they want to pursue in Nigeria, and that's why they actually move to other countries. Now, is there a possibility that most of the students that acquired such certificates had no idea that these universities were fake? Well, I don't even want to call them students. Um, uh, why I, I wouldn't want to call them students? Because um, they would be aware that this is, because there's no way. For example, you come to University of Lagos and spend four years for a four-year course, you know, and the issue, why would you believe that that certificate is fake? So if you, and you know that for, I mean, the minimum, uh, the minimum year for you to pursue a degree course in the Nigerian University or anywhere around the world is four years. And then you go and do, you know, a backside thing and within two weeks or one year and you are issued a certificate. It therefore means that you know from onset that what you are doing is wrong. Now, let me tell you, the problem is with the Nigerian education system. Why do I say the problem with the education system? Because... Or can I say the, the, the Nigerian state? Because everybody wants to employ those who have a degree. In fact, to some extent, those with HND have been uh, have been so have been so pushed to the background that it's only uh, I used to know that in those days in the ministry, if you come with a BSc, they will give they will start you with level eight. Those with HND, I think level seven or so, which is not supposed to be. And 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 this is the reason some Nigerians will pay anything to go and get this fake certificate. And I must also add that when you look at, when you take the Nigerian curriculum, I'm talking about the whole university in Nigeria, if not in Africa, we don't have an Afrocentric curriculum. What we have is the Euro-American, you know, or can I say the Euro-American, uh, 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 the American Eurocentric certificate, I mean, um, a curriculum that is, you know, that, 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 that does not reflect our realities. So it's high time we began to look at curriculum that less so much emphasis on the Afrocentric realities. That way, we will stop these uh, people driving or going towards um, outside of the country oh, okay. to go and look for, you know, um, very fast certificates. Okay, now let's hear from Dr. Ogudoro. Now, how does the phenomenon of certificate racketeering in West Africa undermine the credibility and legitimacy of higher education in the region? That's, I'm talking about West Africa in general. Hello, Dr. Ogudoro, can you hear me? Dr. Okudoro, can you hear me? Okay, uh, Dr. Samok, uh, if you can hear me, please, uh, can you go ahead and uh, answer that question instead? If you can, you actually, did you hear the question or would you like me to repeat it? The credibility, we're talking about the credibility of this certificate yes. on uh, uh, the West African Region, you know, yeah. education system. I tell you, um, just like, a Nigerian will travel uh, overseas and it, it gets to uh, the immigration you know, point and then he tells you, he brings out his green passport and says, I'm a Nigerian, I begin, and maybe uh, the visa officer or the immigration officer would say a Nigerian and will begin to scrutinize, look at the papers one more time because of the, you know, the negative press, press because of the framing uh, that Nigerians you know, are being framed outside of the country. The same thing can be applied to this because when you go to some of these universities, you know, and then bring out your certificate and then you are applying for postgraduate studies, maybe in the United States or UK, and then uh, they find out that um, you are from uh, one of the universities in Cotonou or Benin Republic, uh, what the first thing they will do is um, if I'm the owner of this or maybe the dean of that, a university or the chair or the HOD of that a department, you know, what I would do is to do a, a check. You know, I'll first call for your transcript. You know, I'll first call for student transcript. I'll call for a lot of things to be sure that 
uh, you really you you really spend maybe four years in the university, and then um, I would um, fact check, you know, um, uh, the name of your university and all of that and all of that. So don't forget the internet. They say that the internet doesn't forget. So this kind of publicity, this kind of narrative about um, um, the education system in the West African region is not helping uh, our education system, and 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 it will take some number of years for this narrative to change. And if we have to change it, it has to start with uh, uh, the policymakers, especially the government. Uh, as I did say earlier, there's so much emphasis being laid on you acquiring a degree before you can get a yeah, job. Yeah. And some of my colleagues will tell you from other universities, you read a student's work, you know, and, 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 and you read a student's work and, and you ask yourself, you know, even to the postgraduate level, and you ask yourself how this student was able to write Wayek and then jump and pass uh, those courses. So these are the things we, we, we see, you know, when students come from those such universities and they want to come and do maybe their master's in a university mm. uh, like us, and they submit maybe their proposal or their abstract and when they want to write your project or their dissertation, and you begin to ask yourself, you know, which of the universities that um, oh, this okay. student uh, went through. Uh, uh, all right. Let me, uh, I'm, I'm told that uh, Mr. Og uh, Dr. Ogudora has actually joined us. Uh, Dr. Ogudora, welcome back. We're asking what your thought is on the phenomenon of certificate racketeering in West Africa and how it undermines the legitimacy and also the credibility of higher education within the region. Well, uh, we know that um, the the problem we are addressing here is uh, is rooted in larger uh, uh, systemic uh, flaws uh, in our in our country. Uh, our employers, for example, employers of labour, uh, no matter the the industry you want to look at, overemphasize uh, the the place of certificate in determining who who gets hired. And so we don't place um, great value on, on skill, on knowledge, on awareness, on the right attitudes, probably because the people who are hiring haven't got the right skills to even do the hiring. And so uh, at the end of the day, we, we go for those who have you know, degrees, the mm. HND, and even when we talk about degree, we place too much emphasis on it must be 2-1 or, or, or a first class. So we haven't developed a system that enables us to hire strictly on the basis of capacity to solve practical problems and meet the expectations of the employer in terms of the outcomes that um, we should get from, from, from each job position. And so our children have been brought up to believe that all they need to present to uh, take the next step, even in terms of uh, climbing the academic led ladder, is to present a certificate. And then employers are also recruiting on the basis of the certificates that you present to them. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when that job is available in the public service, where, as we say in Nigeria, connection makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. And so if you continue to run a society where uh, it is not what you can offer that determines the uh, privileges and opportunities you get, then this is the kind of thing you, you, you find yourself you know, having to grapple with. Okay. And we are not about to end this situation. It's going to get worse because um, Nigeria hasn't started thinking about mm -hmm. the way to, make, to give us a merit-based system. All right, now let's look at, you know, uh, the measures that the federal government has actually taken. Some have actually said that, you know, uh, these measures that it has taken to prevent the proliferation of these fake universities and degree certificates are harsh. Now, considering the fact that individuals have built their lives around it, especially those who have, you know, uh, gotten their certificates way back from the school and have started working, uh, do you agree that, you know, it is quite harsh? What is your take on it, Dr. Ogodoro? Yes, well, I, 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 I think that there's need for balance in the way we look at this matter. We can't because we want to be charitable uh, and empathetic and compassionate, then allow our society to accommodate people who haven't worked for their certificates to now come, you know, and work as if they truly do do hold you know university degrees uh, but having said that uh, just let's not forget the point i made at the beginning of this conversation where are we coming from what is the root of the challenge that is in our hands now uh, we 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 may be sweeping you know a lot of dust under the carpet if we don't acknowledge the fact 
that uh, we are not providing adequate opportunities for young people to access higher education, which we have constructed as a very uh, important you know, tool for uh, becoming successful in our, in our society. Out of every 10 young people who write JAM UTMB annually in our, in our country, not more than 50% of them do get access. And then many of these young people are very bright people. Mm. Uh, it gets worse when courses you know, we are discussing are in the areas of engineering, computer science, and medicine. Uh, access you know, rates can come to as low as 5% for some of the courses. And so uh, in a society where certificates are everything, people have got to look for ways of getting what society says is the only thing that can make you become a successful person. So we must not throw away the, the, the child with, um, you know, with, with the bath water. We have to sit down and ask ourselves the question, how did we get to a point where our children are happy to um, get things that they do not, they do not deserve? Uh, we must also uh, not forget that um, I'm not sure that the, what the government is saying is that all the universities uh, where these certificates have been obtained are completely, uh, you know, non non-existing, you know, universities. Some of them are probably recognized in their own countries, but unfortunately, because of uh, lack of proper systems, uh, some Nigerians have penetrated those places and have succeeded in getting certificates that they didn't work for. So we must be. And, and uh, that is the exact nice reason. Yes, that is why. That's yes. the exact reason why I was asking earlier that you know how do we yes. make sure that you know some of these genuine students are not unfairly penalised over this. Yes. So it's it's very important. Uh, we are very uh, you know uh, always very quick to uh, uh, lump everything together in our country and uh, uh, not able to sieve the the the, the, the chaff from, from the wheat. I think that we will not be fair. Uh, to some young people who um, honestly uh, approach these universities because they believe that we are going to, get, going to get good education. And those universities may be recognized in their own countries and do actually give legitimate opportunities for people to study. But what has gone wrong is the fact that a few uh, mercenaries have penetrated that system, unfortunately, and they promised people what they shouldn't, what, what they shouldn't get and which they have eventually you know, succeeded in getting. But uh, we need to be very careful. We need to be more deliberate and be patient and scrutinize the entire system and be sure that we are not truly throwing away the child with the bad water. It will be not. It will be unfair to young people if they went in believing they were getting the right and only to discover that because they didn't have proper guidance, they have got that which they didn't deserve. As a career a practitioner and as <coughs> a, 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 you know, a, a, a somebody who has devoted uh, over three decades of my life researching into higher education, especially access to higher education, I think that the problem that is in our hands now has been um, has come to be largely because as 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 a government, uh, especially at the federal level, we haven't given our young people the proper guidance they deserve. Uh, which would have enabled uh, 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 us to right. prevent the current right. situation we have in our hands. Dr. Ogodoro, we'll come back to uh, scrutinizing the entire system, but let's move to uh, Dr. Samuel now. Uh, some government officials have actually been fingered in, you know, this corrupt practice. What role do you think that these corrupt government officials play in facilitating certificate racketeering, and how can they be held accountable? Well, I, I don't understand what you mean by the government officials. Are you talking about the Nigerian government yes, officials? Yes, Nigerian government collaborating? officials. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, um, you see, it's a crime. And let's let, let's call the spade a spade. Um, something, um, that you've not gotten, and then uh, you claim to have um, or you help others to get something, or you look the other way. I don't know whether they still, uh, because I moved from the civil service to the university. I don't know whether they used to do. I mean, they're still doing it in those days when. You are employed as a graduate, you know, the HR, what we used to call them as minister, uh, admin department, they will write letters, they will write screenly, they, they will write to those institutions, you know, and, and, and ask that, um, your, that they should uh, 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 furnish uh, uh, the department or the cooperation with um, uh, that ministry uh, with information regarding this person that we have just, uh, that they've just employed. You know, I know they used to do that with YAC too, and a lot of people... You know, and, and there were cases where um, when those letters come back, some would say, oh, this person is approved of, oh, this person is not approved of, and things like that. So for, um, for any government official to maybe wrote to such an institution and then the feedback came and um, you discover that this person is not who um, he or she claims to be and you shield it, it's 
not helping the system. And I think those people should be handed over to the police. Now, I tell you another thing that would also, you know, and not just being complicit in our university system. Let me tell you one of the things that can also help, I mean, to, to destroy the system. I observe um, a very terrible trend, which is inbreeding. What do I mean by inbreeding in the Nigerian system? For example, you were in University A, and then you finished from University A for your first degree. You continue your master's in that same university, University A, and then you go for your uh, doctorate degree in that same university A. So you find out that there's no crossbreeding in such institution. A lot of things could go wrong. A lot of cover-ups would go wrong. But if I, if I, if I was in University A, and I want to go and do my master's in University B. University B would have to write, you know, University A to say, hey, this guy is from University A and is coming to do this program with us. You know, what can you say about him and all of that? We want his transcript and things like that. But when you are born or when you were born in a certain village, get married in this, grow in, the certain in a certain village, get married in that certain village, be buried in that certain village, it means that you are not exposed to the outside world. And then at the end of the day, you are bringing a recycled knowledge, you know, to the system, to the young ones, maybe who just passed their uh, uh, their YA and are admitted into year one. And most times these universities, when they recycle like this, when they inbreed like this, they absorb them into the system and they become lecturers. So I would want a situation where, um, where, you know, where, where um, universities, when they want to employ, and, and, and of, uh, I mean, other uh, um, uh, um, uh, agencies, where they look beyond who actually studied with them, where they look beyond who did a, their first degree and their second degree and their third degree is there. I, I want a situation where uh, the University of Suka would hire somebody from um, University of Lagos, uh, where um, University of, 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 of Calabar would, uh, I would, I would hire somebody from University of Medugri so that there will be this crossbreeding mm. of, 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 of knowledge, of ideas. So this... I think too, that used to be the case back then. What did you say? That was obtainable back then, back in the day. Yes, but it's not right now. So we are looking at, you know, we are, we are looking at, you know, obtaining um, certificates, you know, uh, very easy through the back door at Cotonou and this, but in our universities, you just find out there are some people who have stayed on a certain mountain for so long and they get a lot of things very easily because they feel that, hey, I know this lecturer, I know this person, so when I appear before the panel, they will make things easier. Why not go to a place where nobody knows you, where you are going to be tested based on the knowledge uh, that okay. you bring to the table? Uh, uh, so all right. I think all right. should also look at this. All right, over to you now, uh, Dr. Godoro. You've heard everything that Dr. Samuel has actually said. And then earlier, you, you, you talked about uh, scrutinizing the entire system. Now, how do you think that uh, the Nigerian government can improve on its verification processes to detect and also to prevent these fake degree certificates from being used within the country? We, we haven't uh, we haven't started thinking seriously about moving Nigeria forward. This is not rocket science. We should have a central system that enables us to uh, determine who is a student anywhere in Nigeria without having even to go to that individual university. Uh, I, as a student uh, in England, for example, when I wanted to, I got to England, uh, you know, and I wanted to buy Microsoft you know, our office. Uh, because students uh, in that society pay a lot less compared to those who are working, I didn't, you know, have to go to anywhere fill a lot of forms. I just, you know, uh, completed a simple form that enabled me to buy Microsoft Office. And how were they able to determine that I was truly a student? They didn't have to go to any university. Just press the button. Once you get a certain point and you click, yeah, yeah, yeah. The student number your university gives you, you know, it runs quickly to uh, it hits the, the central system in, in Britain and it determines whether or not you are, you are a student. It either rejects you or accepts you. But here, uh, it looks like um, all the universities are just running as, uh, you know, isolated, uh, in, individualized, uh, atomized places where, uh, uh, you know, Ahmad is, is 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 not talking to Nsoka. Nsoka is not talking to Lagos. Lagos is not talking to Ibado. So anything you want, you have to go to those individual places. That's a very costly way to try to verify things. 
we should be able to get Federal Ministry of Education to set up a system that uh, it links all universities in our country, uh, even those in the private sector, so that if you need anything, you just you know put in a student's number or a graduate so a, the number that a graduate used to study anywhere. And once he hits the system, it, it admits or, or, or rejects you know that that number to say we don't know this number. That's not where we are. And that's why we continue to grapple with these kinds of problems. In the whole of Europe, really, if you study in England or you study in Spain or you study in Norway, um, you can you can go to anywhere without, you know, carrying an ID card because the system uh, knows you no matter where you're studying. And that's why Wi-Fi is something, you know, be that benefits all students within, within the Euro European, European Union. It's called Edurum. Here, a lot of times we try to think along those lines, but corruption comes and we truncate it and we have to start all over again because people are thinking more of, how much money they're going to make from the system uh, rather than how, what benefits we're bringing to the table. So until we're able to chase out all the people who keep you know, uh, 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 preventing us from moving forward and bringing in those who have the skills, the knowledge, and mean well for the country, and they're desperate about giving Nigeria a good name, until we're able to get to that point, we will continue to struggle with this, this, kind of, this kind of problem. And then going back to the question you were asking earlier, how did we you know, find ourselves in a, a situation where some government officials have uh, you know uh, become complicit yes. in, in making this happen what you find really why we are discussing what we're discussing is the fact that some of the institutions that are now um, described as fake as non-existent were actually approved to the best of my knowledge by some uh, uh, officials of, of federal ministry of education really they were given a nod to continue to provide education to nigerian students because obviously they took money and looked the other way and pretended that what does not exist exists. And so that is corrupt, the corruption we have always complained about. So I, I think that we need to get more, more, more drastic and insist that okay. those who uh, damage our image and reputation as a country have to start paying a huge price for it. And if we show some good examples of people in high places who have misbehaved, then everybody will, um, will learn that is no longer business as usual. That's the only way to, 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 to move forward for us. Yeah, that's, that's accountability. Now, uh, Dr. Samuel, something Dr. Godoro said earlier was, uh, we do not place value on skills. And we know that societal pressures, you know, plays a huge role in driving the demand for fake degrees. Now, how can we create a culture that values knowledge and skills over mere qualifications? And you have also complained about that as well. Yeah, um, I did say when I started this discourse with you that, um, you know, that the Nigerian system, if not the African system, you know, uh, uh, lays so much emphasis on certificate paper than skill. So we need to de-emphasize the certificate-based education to skilled education. You know, you see, I'm a university lecturer, but if you ask me, sincerely speaking, I would see a situation, I would want a situation where the federal government should establish more polytechnics, more polytechnics in the country. I was not very happy when, you know, Yabatek I wanted to change their name. I think it was a government that wanted to change their name from a Yaba College of Technology. So, so are, are you to, saying um, that we do not have enough polytechnics as of as, as it is right now? We do not have we do not have enough. In fact, if anybody if any country wants to grow, that country needs to pay attention to polytechnic education. That the ones who are the at the forefront of bringing technological innovation, you know. Uh, to any society. I was trying to tell you that I, I was saddened when I heard that I think federal government wanted to change the name of Yaba College of, I mean, Yaba Tech to, I think, is it Lagos City University? I think those ones say, hey, we still want to maintain our name. Let me tell you, when you go to a country like China, when you go to a country uh, like Malaysia, when you go to a country, some of these countries that have been able to develop and overtake India, name it, they don't joke with technological you know, education, which is skill-based education. For example, you have the MIT, you know, in Boston. You have uh, one IT university in India. When those guys get to the U.S., you know, they don't waste time and they integrate them into the labor market. Why? Because, you know, they have a skill. So it's high time we began to, you know, de-emphasize 
this uh, 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 this thirst, this hunger uh, for 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 certificate based education. There are some graduates in this country, and you ask them to come for a job interview. Just give them, um, just give them a paper to write application. You'll be so amazed. You'll be so 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 amazed. Why? Because you know we have laid so much emphasis on education that is paper based. I I started by telling you that you know that Nigeria, especially African, that there's no African university that has an African based curriculum. You can you uh, please if you have anyone uh, you can challenge me. The curriculum that we have are Western based. And I have challenged this so many times. For example, you know, most of the theories that we use in our educational system to explain phenomena, those theories are Western theories. And we are using those Western theories to, to, to explain our local phenomenon. Okay. You know, so that was why I came up, you know, and, and, and the book is almost out. And I call a few colleagues of us and say, hey, let's begin to theorize you know, communication and media, you know, based on our cultural realities. All right. So this is the problem that we have. Mm, that's actually a quite an important step, but uh, I wish we could continue this discussion. Sadly, we have to stop here, but thank you so much, Dr. Peter Ogudoro, education researcher, and Dr. Uwana Samuel, lecturer, uh, University of Lagos, for joining us and speaking to us on the conversation on this particular topic. Thank you very much.